Hey guys, and welcome back to the vlog. Well, today, as you probably know by the thumbnail, I'm going to tell another story. And this one sort of has a poetic justice ending to it. Like Chris got what he deserved, got the crap scared out of him. Okay. So maybe we can do some research here. So one night, so now as I'm hanging out with Chris, we go out, pick up girls, go to strip clubs, pick up girls. That's what we did. That's what, that's what it was all about. So at this time, Chris Note was 100% totally into black women. He was into black women. Wow. You know. So, what do I do? Now I'm with Chris, and I'm with, with this other actor who was in Goodfellas. He was the actor. He was a Jewish guy. He, he's passed away. He was a famous voiceover guy. Let me see if you guys can figure it out. In God, Goodfellas, he was the guy that I think had a, 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 a what do you call them? Phony hairs. The wigs, the wigs, the toupees, the toupees. And he jumped in the bath, he jumped into a swimming pool and he was part of the, 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 the airport heist, Latanza, La, 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 La whatever it was. He, that's that actor. He had a little mustache, Jewish guy, and he played that part. He gets whacked in the movie. So he was the guy that jumped backwards into the pool, that guy. So I'm with Chris Note, I'm with that guy, and he, he, when he would have a few in him and go to the bathroom three or four times, then he wanted to be with a beautiful black woman. I did my share of cocaine. I know what time of day it is. I know when somebody's zooking. That's what we used to call it. That guy's zooking. He would go into the bathroom, come out. Nobody goes to the bathroom five times. In, 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 I mean, every five minutes. That's what he did. Chris, you weren't fooling anybody. <laughs> Everybody knew. Although he never did it in front of me. I saw it on his lip. So, I was heavily into strip clubs at that time. And um, I knew all the girls in New Jersey and in New York. And I knew this one girl. She was beautiful. She could have been an actress. She could have been a model. She, she was better looking than Beverly Johnson. Beautiful complexion, beautiful hair, beautiful nails. She, and she was a stripper. And she had a two, year, two and a half year old little boy. And she was from Atlanta, Georgia. And she was just a, a, just a beautiful human being, just a nice girl, just a nice girl. And I told him, I said, you know what? I know this nice girl. You're really looking for a girl? I'm, this is not a girl to spend the night with. This is the type of girl that you want to marry. And she's got, she's a beautiful kid. She's uh, is starting the enlistment process to join the United States Air Force. And I keep telling them, don't do no stupid shit with her, cause I'll, I'll F you up. You, you do anything bad to this girl and I'm coming for you. So we get in the car, we're in the city and we drive to Lynnhurst, New Jersey, where they had this strip club. Sorry if I, I hit that, I'm just, um, this is a bad story. So, um, we go into the strip club, my girl's there, and she doesn't even know who he is. And then he tipped her like a 10 or a 20. She came down. I said, hey, how you doing? This is my friend, Chris Note, and he's a movie star. And then, of course, everybody in the bar, it was a circle bar, was looking at him. Everybody knew who he was but her. And she goes, are you kidding me? I said, go ask, hey, hey, tell her. Hey, everybody, tell her who he is. Oh, that's Detective Mike Logan. Oh, whoa. Wow, blew her mind. Well, a movie star is interested in her. So she comes down 
I talked to her first because he's really interested in you. He really thinks, you know, you've been up there for 20 minutes. He thinks the world of you. Why don't you guys exchange numbers? And they do. They do. Short time after that, he and the voiceover guy from Goodfellows. If anybody knows who, what, guys, what name that guy is, please comment on the section below. He, he passed away. He's, he's gone. He's no longer with us. So we leave, and I tell him, whatever you do, and I, I'm threatening him in the car. We're in my car, and I'm telling him, that's a real girl. That's a good woman. You know, don't mess with her. Okay. Now let's cut right to the chase what he does. So they set up a date. Now this girl lives in Newark, New Jersey. She lives 10 blocks from Broad Street Station with New Jersey Transit. So she had to take a train to the path and then a cab from the path to 10th Street to his apartment. And that's exactly what she did. So now Newark in that area there is a very, very bad neighborhood. Now this girl's going on a date with this movie star and she is dressed to the nines in a sexy outfit. She shows up at his apartment. He takes her something to eat. He takes her back to his apartment. They have unprotected sex. Then instead of, in New York City, you could pick up the phone and call a limo and that could take her right to Newark. What would it cost? 150, 200? He gives her, he calls a cab, gives the cab driver $20 and takes her back to the, to the uh, path. And she had to go all the way to Newark, walk 15 blocks from the station in her sexy getup in a, in a ghetto type project area. That's what, that, when I heard he did that to the girl and then you know what he did? He never called her back again. And I found out from another stripper what he did. And then when I, I, I forget the girl's name now. Then when I, I finally tracked her down and he told me she told me what he did and how he treated her. He just like, you know, I, am, I, I almost had a fight with him over that. And I don't know why I didn't cut my ties with him then. Okay, so now let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten months later. We're in a new year. I go to that strip club in Lyndhurst and I go, where's What's her name? And she goes, oh, well, she didn't pass her physical for the Air Force. And I said, what do you guys mean? She tested positive for HIV. Wow. Whoa. And she moved back to her mother house in Atlanta, Georgia. Wow. And I knew he didn't use a condom. So I'm going, oh, this. Now this is 10 months later when I figure out what happened to that girl. Did I tell Chris? No, I didn't tell him. But I told our mutual friend, the big shot movie producer. So days after, you know, and the Big Shot movie producer, I told him what he did to my friend and how he treated her. Don't forget, this guy was making 35, I think he made $5 million on Law and Order over the five years period that he was there, plus doing other acting jobs. He was a multi, multi millionaire. You just don't, you just don't treat people like this. So I told, uh, Mr. Big Shot producer. And he goes, whoa, what, what? And I go, yeah, that's what he did. That's what he did. He had sex, look what he did to her. 
Now I found out the Air Force rejected her because she tested positive for HIV. Whoa, and that is, and your boy, and this, this producer, this producer was right with him. Everywhere these two guys go, he was right up his you know what. So I said, yeah. He goes, um, well, you gotta tell him. I says, I don't have to tell shit to him. I'm not talking to that guy. I'm not telling him stuff, and I don't want you to tell him. He's a big boy. You don't go around having unprotected sex with strippers and think it's going to be okay in this AIDS environment that we're living in. And now I'm talking about 1996. So, um, I tell him, I'm not telling him shit. And I hang up the phone on him. Three minutes later, boom, my phone rings. And it's Chris Nolte. I go, hey, how you doing, Chris? What, what, uh, why are you calling me, bro? I haven't seen you in like a year. Uh, what's going on? Oh, nothing. I'm just, hey, I'm just curious. Whatever happened to that girl? I said, which one? Which one, Chris? You know, the girl, the black girl. Which one, Chris? You, which one? Which one? You, you're, the, you're the super stud there. Which one? You know, the girl from the... I said, hey, calm down, dude. Why are you getting all huffy puffy with me? And, um... I go, who are you talking about? Talking about the girl from Lyndhurst? The girl that you left? That girl that you left after you had your way with her and she had to walk 15 blocks to her house in Newark, New Jersey? Is that the girl you're talking about? She goes, yeah, yeah, what, whatever happened to him? Well, I'll tell you what, pal. I don't know if this is true or not, but I heard she was disqualified from going into the Air Force because she tested positive for HIV. Well, he was like, whoa, why did you do Hey, calm down, dude. Who are you yelling at? And we're having a little pissing contest. You don't yell at me. You're a big boy. You get what you deserve. Why didn't you wrap it? Why didn't you wrap it? And then he starts to calm down. So you go, how can I find her? I said, the last I heard, she's in Atlanta, Georgia. You, have, you must know her uh, full name, her real name. Uh, look her up. She, no, 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 this is serious. I don't want you. Don't you go to the media. Don't you go. And I didn't go to the media for 25 years until right now. I guess you could call this the media. Mm, I guess you could call it. He was so freaked out. Now, let's talk about HIV tests back then. HIV tests back then. If you came in contact with someone who had HIV, there was an 18-month window. You couldn't go down and test and get a positive result or a negative result. That was true. You had to wait 18 months, then get tested. And that's where he, was, he flipped out. Now, I'm not sure if it was France. I think it was Paris, France. They had another test that if you were exposed and contracted HIV, their test could pick it up right away. He, the next day, got on a plane to Paris, had that test, came back, called me up and told me, uh, I'm negative, thank God. He says, don't ever mention this, don't ever tell this, to the this story to the media. And of course, I didn't because this was before he molested my fiance. So that's another one of Chris Note's story. And I got a whole bunch more I'm gonna be talking about too. So again, guys, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. You're not going to get this kind of, I don't know what kind of stories these are anywhere else but right here. Thank you, guys, and God bless.